Good morning. Is it morning? I don't know. It is just still morning. It is 11.30 and my name is Lee. I am joined here by a needy boy. Are you needy? Are you needy? No, my dog is right here. Oh, there he is. <laughs> He's being very needy right now. Oh? What? Why are you giving me your paw? He just gave me his paw and he's just sitting here. What's going on? You need to go lay down. Yeah. He's just staring at me. Boy, go lay down. Go lay down. Anyways, yes, it's 11.30. It is May 2022. May 24th of 2022. And... Man, summer sock camp is gonna start here soon and I am really gearing up. Whew. Anyways, I have a lot to catch you up on today. I didn't do a proper podcast last week. I did a vlog, so if you missed that, please go back and check it out. We're at a slightly different angle today so that you can see a little bit more of this and a little less of this. Um, figured it didn't really matter if I was centered or not. We'll survive either way. He's still just sitting here staring at me quietly. It's very strange. Yes, I'm actually gonna be filming two videos today. One of which is going to be a, and like about me video, my knitting story and my story in general that I'll be putting up as like the intro video on my channel, so. I'm a little bit nervous about that. It feels different somehow than a podcast, but it's okay. We will make it work. I have been working hard at clearing my needles for summer sock camp. So I have lots of finished objects to show you today. Is lots the correct word? He laid down. I don't know if lots is the correct word, but I have some good ones. I also have one frog project that I haven't physically frogged yet, so I'll show you before I frog it. Um, and I have two new cast ones. That's wild. I also have my specific plans to start summer sock camp, so I'll share that with you as well. Did I say two new cast ones? Yes, I have two new cast ones and one also a soon to be cast on that I'm just trying to be patient for. Anyways, let's just get into it. Let's get into it. I said my name is Lee. I said what day it is. I'm in Pittsburgh, PA. It is lovely outside. It was warm for a few days and it has cooled off just enough that it is pleasant now. And yeah, it's Tuesday. I already feel like this week has been long. I'm trying to uh, prepare mentally and emotionally and like physically, like with the house and all my stuff, my work things for going out of town in June. I'm gonna be spending like half of the month out of town. So that's gonna be wild. But I'll update on all of that stuff in life update stuff. I, okay, yes, I was thinking about my acquisitions cause I didn't prepare any of them. I, only have one and it is close by, so we're okay. We're okay. All right, first things first, we'll do FOs. My first FO is, we'll go from least exciting to most exciting, I guess. It is an arbitrary uh, judgment call on what is the most exciting and what is the least exciting. But the first finished object I have are my jelly roll socks. Also, if you did watch the vlog last week, I talked about all of my projects a bit and there may be some repetition here in this podcast because I didn't think too hard about it and I wasn't going to go back and double check what I talked about. It was less than a week ago so that I filmed it so there might be some repetition but that's fine. I know not everyone's into vlogs so for you I will repeat some things but maybe not all things but yes. These are my Jelly Roll socks. They are a pattern by, I don't remember. I'll put it on the screen because I'm a bad podcaster and forgot to look. 
but it is modified, heavily modified, how I knit these. I did the little rollies at the top and then I knit a long leg. These are normally just be shorties, like right above the heel. And then I replaced the heel flap and gusset with a uh, fish lips kiss heel because I cannot be arsed to do a heel flap and gusset if I don't have to. So yeah, those are done. That's the only thing I really changed. I think they turned out super cute. The yarns are, do I still have them? Do I still have tags? I may have thrown them away. It is Hedgehog Fibers for the main yarn. It is their sock base and it is the color Mulberry. And the contrast color is Fucolana Arveta Classic in the color Calendula. And that's those. That is those. Da, da, da. Next FO is one that has been lingering for so long. I have finished my envelope cowl. It has this beautiful twist. It is so soft and luxurious and does not look like it should have taken me as long to finish as it did. But I'm so glad it's done. Try it on for you. It's so cozy. This twist really makes it perfect. It doesn't stick all up in your face and stuff. Oh my gosh, look at it. It's perfect. I love it. It is knit out of Spin Cycle, dyed in the wool, in the color Space Oddity. That's the color changing uh, bit here. And then the fuzzy is, <coughs> sorry, excuse me, Camarose Midnight Sol held double in the color beige. And that's it. That's the whole thing. It is a pattern by Samantha Guerin. I have tags, I believe, for this one that I can throw away. Nope, I can't. Never mind. It's a different spin cycle tag. Oh my gosh, something to my eye. Probably surrey fibers. <laughs> this is very fuzzy. And this has been washed and blocked. It took an eternity to dry, but it smelled so good. My whole studio smelled really good while it was in here blocking. And that's that. Finished object. Oh man, it, it has been feeling really good to clear some of these lingering whips off of the needles. So good. And now I just get to put that one directly into storage until it cools off again. I have one more whip. Lies. I have one more FO. I don't know why I said whip. And my last FO is my trumpet pullover. I finished it. Ah, I'm so excited. This is the front. I need to put a tag in it because it's a little difficult to tell which is the front. It has not been washed and blocked yet, but I tried it on and it fits perfectly. Amazing, incredible. The fabric has this incredible cozy drape. It's so squishy. I don't know if that comes across on camera, but it is insanely good, this fabric. So, so glorious. This cable, like look how deep the raglan is on this. Coziest sweater I've ever made, I'm pretty sure. Yes. This is a pattern by a designer, a lovely, wonderful, talented designer that I will not try to butcher their name, and I will have it right here on the screen. Uh, it was designed for the Wolf Folk Fleck collection, and the yarn I used is not Wolf Folk Fleck. It is Fiber for the People. Fiber for the People. The Hemp Merino Sport Base. I'm so glad that this is the last time I have to say this. Uh, the Hemp Merino Sport Base, 70% organic merino, 30% hemp, in the color Lantana. You guys, I am so happy that I have an actual garment finished. It feels so good. I don't know why I go through these phases of like knit, uh, casting on a ton of garments all at once. And then I'm like overwhelmed by how many garments I have to finish. But that one is done. Before I go on to whips, I did want to take one moment to mention 
a project that has been lingering in my whip basket for a very long time, an obscenely long amount of time. And I did pick it up the other day to give it a shot to see if I felt like finishing it and I don't. So I'm going to be frogging this project. This has a page on my Ravelry project pages and has already been moved to frogged. But since it was active, it was an actual whip on my project pages, I decided I was going to mention it on here to let you guys know that finishing things isn't the only way to clear things off of your needles. If something isn't bringing you joy anymore and you don't want to knit on it anymore, it's okay to frog it. Just put that yarn back into your stash. This is in a bag that has been sitting useless with this project in it for way too long from Mountain State Stitches. And it's got mums on it, I believe, but they look like fireworks and I love it. It's also got fuzz all over it. I need to lint roll this bag. And in here I have my anticline mitts. I don't, I think I probably did print the cover page of these because I did them so long ago. Oh, I at least have a photo page here. Oh, nice cover. Anticline mitts. They are these gorgeous, beautiful things from Emily Green. I seriously thought about continuing and finishing these just because I want the finished product. But I just don't like working on it. I do not like working on it. The entire thing is twisted rib with some cabling and that is just not my jam. It's just not for me. I have in here the yarn I was using. It's Brooklyn Tweed, the recommended yarn. Oh, no, it's not. Just kidding. It's Brooklyn Tweed Loft in the color Embers. And it's beautiful and wonderful. And I'm going to make a pair of mitts out of it. It just will not be these mitts. So I get to frog. This is as far as I got. I pulled them out the other day to test. Like I said, I was going to see if I felt like finishing them. And I finished off the cabling on the cuff and decided I hated it. So not how it looks, just doing it. I hated physically doing it. And I am a process knitter, not a product knitter, which is why it was so difficult for me to make a decision on these because I wanted the product, but didn't enjoy the process. So I just took those needles out and lost one of my, one of my stitch markers. I found one, but I'm so glad that these are, these are actually sock needles. So they get to go back into my needle case just in time for sock camp. A whole nother size one, set of size ones. What happened to that other progress keeper? I'll find it one day. But yes, I get to unwind this and put this yarn back into stash and one day I will make a pair of fingerless mitts, just a more enjoyable pattern to knit. Yay! One more whip gone. I did work just a teeny tiny bit on my Hello From My Colors crop, but very casually it was not enough for me to not, and not enough to warrant showing you. So that will not be shown today. But I do have two new cast-ons. I have one in a bag and one not in a bag. I guess I'll show you the one not in a bag first because it's out. And here I have started a Ripple Bralette DK. I have gotten past the bottom hem, which is a one by one twisted rib, and I have gotten into the three by three rib body. I am knitting this on 16 inch circulars, so it looks atrociously tiny, and I'm also knitting it out of boucle. I caked this boucle up actually to make a pair of house socks. And when I caked it up and looked at it, I said, no, this needs to be a top. And I didn't have enough to do like a big sweater or something out of it, but I thought that it would be super cute to make a little tank top bralette type something out of it. So I decided on the Ripple Bralette DK and I am 
loving how it's turning out. It is a little bit difficult to read my knitting in this yarn, but I'm making it work. And I'm so excited. I started this last night. So I think this is going to fly off the needles, which is perfect for summer knitting. And, oh, it's a pattern by Jessie Mae. The yarn is from Vita Lifestyle. Vita Lifestyle. The color is Lavender Macaron and it is the Vita Cloudy DK. Yeah, so that's exciting. I'm really excited about that top. It is going to be so cute. I said it was a Jesse Mae Martinson pattern, didn't I? I think I did. I think I just said that. Memory of a goldfish over here. The other new cast on I have is in this Hamilton bag from Paisley and Gold Sewing. These are my, some of my favorite project bags. And I have in here a glorious summer top. I have knit in the past. You may have, if you've been here a while, you may have seen me wear it at some point. But I knit the Rift Tee by Jacqueline Seaslack, or Seaslack, however you pronounce her name. Uh, the Rift Tee, I knit that last year sometime and I used 100% linen to knit it. And it is one of my most worn garments. It is so easy to just throw on, super casual with anything. It just is perfect, amazing, wonderful. And because it's linen, it is, it doesn't, I, excuse you, this little butt hit the tripod. I don't overheat in it. I'm really prone to overheating and just, it's so, and it's like a loose open gauge. I just, I love it. I love it and I cannot say enough good things about it. But I realized I needed more things like that in my wardrobe that I can just reach for to be cool and comfortable in. So I decided to cast on another Jacqueline Seach, Seach, Lack, Seach Lack. I really need to figure out how to say her name. Uh, Jackie, I cast on another Jackie pattern and I decided to try a new base, a new yarn, a new base this time. And this is a yarn from Did I not bring the tag over here? I did not bring the tag over here. This is a glorious, beautiful yarn from Terrapin Fiberworks. And it is so beautiful. Look how shiny. It is a 100% fingering weight tinsel yarn. And it is the color Meaningful Conversation. It is a Bridgerton themed colorway and oh my gosh it is so beautiful not only is it super shiny which is great but it just is so drapey just what i wanted i am still on the first skein here and this yarn is so slippy i have to keep needle point stoppers on my needles at all times when i'm not working on it but i am this far look like anything right now it really doesn't and the back looks kind of atrocious I need to finish figuring this stuff out weaving in ends on tinsel is is interesting it's very interesting but look at this beautiful gorgeous fabric that it's making it's going to be very open very airy very light and very drapey I last night finished the last increase row for the yoke and went back and picked up and finished the collar off so that that was done and I'm going to knit the rest of the recommended rows for the yoke and then try it on and make sure everything's good to go but yeah it's going I'm trucking along with it it's very interesting, like physically, to knit with my hands this yarn, because knit with my hands, of course I knit with my hands. It's very interesting to work with this yarn because it's a lot like linen and the fact that it doesn't stretch at all. It is very unforgiving, but it's so slick. And so it slides right across the needles. It doesn't stick at all like cotton would. Um, it even starts to get a little bit of its own halo. 
like as I've been working with it, it's really softened up. So it will definitely wear much softer than it feels freshly knit up. So I'm really excited about this. I'm enjoying it so far. I cast this on night before last, I think I cast this on. And that's as far as I am. That's as far as I am. So those are the only two things I've been actively working on these past couple of days because I'm gearing up for summer sock camp. I did prepare one more project that I wanted to knit over the summer, but I have not cast it on because I wanted to finish some other stuff before I cast anything new on. So I don't know if I'm gonna wait until I finish like, like this before casting it on or if I'm going to finish like my Hello From My Colors crop first. I don't know how this is gonna go yet, but at some point when I finish something, I'm going to be casting on another summer top. This is in my, my bag that I made, and it is, I have my new, my new stitch marker here from Sassafras Knits. I ordered her strawberry. I actually have another one coming. This is the red one, and I also ordered the pink one because I love the strawberries. Uh, yes, there's nothing on this page that is not on the project page, like the Ravelry page. These are just the regular details, but I am going to make the Moonset Tea by Ozetta. And this is what it looks like. I want mine to look exactly like that, just kind of a slightly oversized, really casual t-shirt. And I am knitting mine out of, I have two cakes caked up and ready to go. I am knitting mine out of Shibui Pebble. This is a very interesting yarn and it's going to be a very luxurious t-shirt. I have all of my cakes in here actually because I didn't want them sitting in my stash while I was actively knitting on them but I have Shibui Knits Pebble. There we go. And this is a 48% recycled silk, 36% merino, and 16% cashmere yarn. So a bit luxurious. Going to be a bougie ass t-shirt, but I am really excited about it. I needed Six. Yes, I needed six skeins of this. The these are 25 gram uh, hanks, so I needed six of them for this t-shirt. And I am excited to cast this on, but I will be good. I will not cast on. Look how teeny tiny these little cakes are. They're so cute, little teenies. But yes, I will be good. I will not cast it on until I have something else finished. And that is the only project I have planned besides socks. Because as soon as it is midnight, Friday night slash Saturday, I am casting on three pairs of socks for summer sock camp. It's happening. I am so excited it is almost here. I am really proud of myself for being so good about finishing up things before camp starts. I don't know, it just feels really good. It feels really good to actually be kind of prepared this year. I've never actively prepared for sock camp before. Also Saturday, Saturday is the 28th, right? Today is Tuesday, 24th, 25th, 26th, 27th. Yes, Saturday the 28th is also going to be the summer sock camp update at Crazy Sock Lady Co. And I'm going to be hitting that bitch up, you know. I at least want a bag because those Mountain State Stitches bags she has been teasing online are everything I've ever wanted. So I'm getting at least one of those. I need to be able to prepare. I hope she posts more teasers so I can decide which one I want ahead of time. But in the meantime, I have decided on my first three pairs of socks. Isn't this exciting? The first pair, I tried to keep a variety here. The first yarn I picked 
is my this is actually the color I picked for my year of striped socks this is my May color and I just held off because camp starts on the 28th of May so it's still in May so I waited until just be, mostly because I wanted to finish things clear needles and get ready but this is my May striped sock color and this is Desert Vista Dye Works in the color George. It is a George Strait themed self-striping yarn. And that is the color, the first yarn I picked to start camp with. The second color, or the second sock yarn I picked is, to give myself a bit of variety, a DK weight yarn. This is uh, West Yorkshire Spinners Croft. It is a Shetland wool. It's a Shetland tweed wool. And it is a DK weight, so I figured that these will go by super quickly. And I love this color. It reminds me, reminds me of a 70s couch, and I'm here for it. I'm all here for it. So I'm gonna make a nice cozy pair of DK weight socks out of this. And this is what the tag looks like. This was also a very affordable sock yarn. It is not only commercial, but it was only $17 for this skein. So that is a very reasonable pair of socks. And it's 100% Shetland Island wool. Feels very rustic. It is 246 yards for 100 grams, so it's a pretty generous DK weight. And uh, if I like it, I will definitely be going and picking up more because who doesn't love a DK, pay, DK weight pair of socks? That is the second pair I'll be casting on as soon as camp starts. The last color I will be casting on, the last pair of socks that I will be casting on as soon as camp starts, is my Maryland Sheep and Wool yarn. This is the show color from Neighborhood Fiber Co. It is called Sherwood Gardens. It was the show color for this year. And this is a 100% merino sock yarn. Well, it's a 100% merino fingering weight yarn. I will be using it for socks. So for me, it is sock yarn. It is this beautiful color, or assortment of colors. So I will be using a contrast color for this one. The other two I will not, I will just use them as the entire pair of socks. But the contrast color I picked for this is this scrap of 100% Superwash Polworth from Fiber for the People. I've knit three pairs of socks using this color already and they are holding up super well. I'm very pleased with how this yarn holds up. And this is the color Junie, which I'm pretty sure she doesn't sell anymore. So it gets a place of honor in a fourth pair of socks here. I'll probably just do heels and toes with this. And that's it. That is the last pair of socks I will be casting on first. <laughs> I still have my bucket of eight other sock yarns and then I still have my shelves as well that I'm allowing myself freedom to pick from. He's closing today at the clinic so he will be home late which means I will probably be working late as well. So that is one of the reasons I'm taking the opportunity to film two videos today. Ooh, if I'm gonna be gone for a bunch of June, I might need to film ahead for some of those. You can't really film podcasts ahead of time. I don't know, I'll have to think about it. I am thinking about filming Summer Sock Camp updates though. Let me know what you think about that. Obviously, I'll be including updates in my podcast episodes, but I don't know. I don't know. Is that it for yarny things? I think that's it for like whips and such. Whips, FOs, cast on plans. The only thing in acquisitions today is actually really exciting. So do you guys remember just out of frame here. My granny square blanket. I finished all of these squares. This is just a small stack off of the top of the stack. I think there are 72 squares total. I need to lay them all out on the floor. 
I should do that today. I just vacuumed yesterday, so the, so the rug isn't gross. <laughs> so maybe I should do that today. Maybe I'll film it and put it up here as a bonus video in June for you guys. But I went ahead and ordered the joining color for this blanket. And it came, I ordered with some help from my friends on the internet. I had no idea how much yarn to order, but I ended up ordering three skeins and I hope it's gonna be enough. But three skeins of Bare Hawthorne Fingering. This is from Knit Picks. It is a fingering weight two ply. So it is a, it's a very similar, it's the same twist. It's a two ply like all of the yarns I used in the squares are two ply. Hold. All right, all of the yarns I used for my squares are two ply. All of those are merino nylon blends though. This is actually not merino, it is Highland wool. But it looks the same because it's got the same twist. And it is 80-20 Highland wool and nylon and I love how this feels. <laughs> I am a big fan of this. I, this is my first time ordering Hawthorne. I had never purchased it before. It did not arrive like this it arrived loose so i actually hanked it up like this and i'm like i said i really hope three skeins is going to be enough but i think i'm about ready to start joining my blanket together which is going to be so much fun i have been itching to crochet some more <laughs> so i think this might be the perfect thing because i could work on my snail but the snail requires a lot of concentration. Like it's, it's a little bit intense. So I can only do that when I have like time to sit down and work on it. This would be casual. Oh man, I'm really excited now about laying out all of my squares and getting those ready. Like planning my layout. Yes, I am gonna film that with you guys so that you can be a part of the process. But that's my only acquisition. I feel like, I feel like that's wrong. No, I did get something in the mail, but it wasn't, it didn't have anything to do with yarn. It was just, I ordered a bathing suit. Maybe that's what I'm thinking of. Must be. But anyways, I think that is all of the yarny content today. If that's all you were interested in, thank you so much for joining me. I am about to talk about personal stuff now. Just life updates. Not that we have a ton. Don't think I have much of anything, actually. I already updated you guys. Okay, actually this is a lie. I think, now don't correct me if I'm wrong because I don't want to hear it, but I filmed a podcast before I filmed that vlog last week and I just didn't think it was good. So that's why I ended up vlogging. So the things I talked about in that podcast, I may be thinking you've already heard, but you obviously haven't heard because I didn't post it. So I'm sorry, I got fuzz, like yarn fuzz all over my face. So for life updates, I have planned a vacation for me and Bradley. Well, I'm, in, I'm currently still planning it. I booked a resort and that is, so we have dates and we've vaguely planned. This vacation, I've been keeping most of my motivation, Brad. I want him to have a good time. I wanna do things that he really enjoys so one of the things he really enjoys is not planning things, which makes my little heart stress. I'm not into that. I do not like not planning. I don't like improvising. I just, it stresses me out a little bit. But if we plan to not plan, it makes it a little bit different. So I've booked us three nights in a resort in Estes Park or Estes Park. I always want to say Estes Park. I don't know how you pronounce it actually. Colorado. Neither of us have ever been to Colorado. Neither of us have been to Rocky Mountain National Park. And we will be going there. Obviously, Estes Park is right at the entrance. And probably visiting Denver too while we're there. So I'll probably be hitting up a couple of yarn shops. I made a list of just a couple because I don't want to spend the whole time yarn shopping while we're there. But 
yes, I am planning on us just having a really good time and not stressing about anything and not worrying about anything. So we are trying to save up money, making sure we just have no limits for ourselves and we're gonna have a great time. And we're going to be gone for at least a week and we will be road tripping there and road tripping back. And road tripping, we will be stopping just as we please and seeing things as we please. So that will be a lot of fun as well. I will be traveling in June for a couple of different things. At the beginning of June, I'm going to be gone for over a week, like 10 days, nine or 10 days. I will be visiting my family in South Georgia, which is atrociously hot. And I'm glad I bought a new bathing suit because it might motivate me to actually get in the water sometimes. It'll be nice to see my family. I haven't seen them in years at this point. Like, I don't know if I've seen them since the pandemic, but it's not under great circumstances. We are going to like a funeral type service thing. We're going to an ash ceremony and I'll be gone for a long time in June. It's stressing me out a little bit being away from home for that long and not working. But I do have one project, like illustration project, I plan on taking with me and I will be knitting on socks the entire time. So that'll be nice. And then at the end of June, the weekend of the 24th, which is actually the weekend right after my birthday, um, I will be in South Carolina and then in North Carolina. I'm going to South Carolina a little bit early and then riding up with my mom to go to Heroes Con in Charlotte, North Carolina, where I will be working. That is a work trip. So I'll only be gone for about five days that time, which I guess is still a lot, but you know, it's work. So that'll be good. It'll be good to make some money. I also am going to be in Chicago for C2E2 in August and in Baltimore for Baltimore Comic Con in October on Halloween weekend. So I get to make lots of spooky things for and that's all I got, I think. Those are the only life updates. I am stressing out a little bit about a doctor's appointment. I never worried about going to the doctor before moving up here. Back in South Carolina, my doc, I, I'm really irresponsible. I'm not a very good adult. The only doctor appointment, the only doctor I go to is the gynecologist. And I only go, I go every year. Like I'm good about going every single year. But back in South Carolina, my gynecologist kind of acted like my GP also. Like, like she prescribed me all of my medications and she talked to me about like whatever I wanted. And I really got spoiled on that. My doctor here, she does not do that. And it really stresses me out. She like, my last visit to her, she told me I needed to get a GP. And I was like, <laughs> I don't want to. If I, the, like, I've gotten sick like two times as an adult where I've needed to go to the doctor. And both times I just went to urgent care. I don't know. I mean, they weren't good experiences. I probably should get a GP, but it's, I just, I'm not the kind of person who goes to the doctor willingly. It's okay, it's fine, it's fine. I'll survive. The reason I'm more nervous is because the reason <laughs> She told me, she recommended me get a GP is because one of the medications I'm on, she suggests getting blood work done every year. Can I tell you real quick how terrified I am of needles? I am terrified of needles. I faint. I faint all the time anyway. I'm a fainter. I have really low blood pressure and I'm just a fainter. Needles make me faint. I hate it. It stresses me out. It scares me. I don't, the fear, the, I just don't like it. So last time I went to the gynecologist, I was not worried because it was just the gynecologist. And then suddenly on my way out, I had to get blood work done and I fainted. <laughs> uh, I just, it traumatized me a little bit because I wasn't going in expecting to get blood work done because I've had blood work done before. Like, it's not like I've, I'm an adult. I'm, it's not like I've never had blood work done, but I need to know ahead of time. That was like surprise blood work. So now I'm nervous about going to the gynecologist and I just have never been nervous about it before. And now I am and it just stresses me out. I'm just stressing. 
But anyways, that's, that's it today, I think. I really need to get, my phone's blowing up again. I'm gonna get started on my other two videos I'm gonna film today now. Now that I've decided I'm gonna film my little, my little blanket video, I'm going to let you guys go. And thank you so much for joining me today. If you enjoyed my rambling, please feel free to subscribe and like. This is how, this is how I indicate subscribing and liking. It's, it's okay. I'm fine today. I'm fine. Anyways, thanks so much for watching. I will see y'all next time. I love you.